Hello everybody, Tihomir here and um, here we're going to show another um, JVPN business app demo um, but before I start I do want to show you and I will put this link in the description of the video we do have a github um, a repository for all of our tutorials and samples um, so all of the stuff that I've been doing videos on and also the tutorials uh, this is very nice um, it kind of follows the documentation so when, when you're going through the docs you have the code right here so this is really nice to have so it's a uh, one location for you to come and, and start you know using this stuff testing it out and, and getting your own ideas of uh, building your own business applications so for this demo I do want to um, kind of uh, go back to the JPM ability to in integrate with other services and for that I, I, I do want to show again our JPM work item repository you know this is a repository where you can download co work items or, or connectors that your business processes uh, can use to do a lot of different stuff uh, for example as you can see connect to different Google services and stuff like that but for this demo uh, I will focus on the integration or, or, or connection to the IFTTT service. If you're not familiar with that, uh, it stands for If This Then That. And it's an online service that is really kind of interesting and also powerful. It allows you to connect devices um, and things that typically don't talk to each other. And um, they have a ton of integration points and you know you can connect your phone with your uh, for example your uh, e email gmail i mean you you know if you're using some sort of home devices like google home or alexa or, or you know anything that you might have they probably have an integration point for it and it allows you to connect a couple of things together to create really powerful things um, I do want to show you that in order to use IFTTT in this demo, you have to go um, to platform.ifttt.com. Uh, you can log in with your Google account, and once you're logged in, you need to create a service. And this is uh, kind of like a sample service, give it some information. And once you've created, you can then create these little code blocks, you know, the, the if this, then that. It's if and then sta uh, statements. Uh, they call them applets. So let's take a look at the applet we're going to use for the demo. Um, this is the receive pickup request applet. And basically for the demo, you know, the demo is very simple. We are some sort of um, either a taxi or some sort of Uber service that can um, receive requests for pickup. Uh, so those are people that are in some location, don't have a car or don't have means to, to uh, travel. Where they need to go and they send us a request um, we then receive this information um, and uh, you know the location where they, we need to go to pick the person up so let's go ahead and edit this app applet to see how easy it is um, the applets in ifttt have uh, an if statement or what they also called a trigger and you can have multiple then statements um, that can do different things, uh, access the integration points and things like that. So basically our applet says if we receive a webhook or a web request um, with some event name which is called order pickup um, then we're going to do two things. The first thing we're going to do is since we receive the address from this web request of the person it has to tell us where she or he is, uh, we on our phone because you know we're busy we can't look at a laptop all the time these are drivers they're on on the go uh, we do want to launch Google Maps and um, basically um, say the destination is something called value one this is also very simple you can think of value one two and three uh, as simple variables they call them ingredients and basically for a web request or webhook request uh, IFTT allows you to have up to three values. So you can use them basically as placeholders here uh, for the data that actually are user centered, in which we will see in the demo is simply first name, last name, and an address. The second action uh, that we're going to do is um, send an SMS message in case 
you know we also want to see a text message uh, for the request and here you can basically set the message to be hello and then again use these ingredients of a or, 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 or variables we can going to say is uh, value 2 in our case I think is going to be the first name value 3 is going to be the last name of the person re uh, requesting pickup and then value 1 is going to be the address um, that we need to go and pick this person from. And you can add more actions, you can add filters, so it allows you to to somewhat define the integration that you want. All right, so that, that's far for the applet. Let's take a look at now a uh, very simple business process that where we're going to use this in. And, you know, it can't get any simpler. Uh, we do have, this is the IFTTT call, which is the work item handler um, that we have in our process and our business process as you see we see has three inputs which is the first name last name um, and the address um, basically these three become inputs to this ifttt called work item uh, which uh, we tell also the each of the applets sorry has uh, as you've seen here i think let me show you that Go back to applets. If I click here, um, as you can see, each applet has an event name. So if we make a web request for this event name, um, there's also a key that you need that you, when you log in, you, you, you get a key access key that you have to use for the request. And uh, then you pass in your variables. So if we make a webhook request, uh, from our business process to the service, then our applet will be triggered. And then the actions of the applet will be executed. So if you can see, you can use this IFTT uh, call work item a lot in your business processes and do some really powerful things. Um, and, you know, hopefully we'll do some more demos on this if there, you know, and do some cooler stuff. But for the first one, we'll just do what we do. So now that we established our business process and what the service that we're going to be used in our in our business process, let's take a look at our business app. And again, you know, I'm not going to go through. You go to start.jpm.org. Uh, you generate your business application, and this is what we have. And then, as we also talked about in the previous videos, and I can link them in the description. Um, you know, you kind of get started with with creating your um, business, uh, your business processes, rules, getting them in your KJAR model, and stuff like that. Um, for this, um, I'm kind of just going to go through the code quickly. Um, our demo is um, basically um, a slash demo. We have a get mapping and a post mapping, so we present a, bit, a form to our user. Um, this form includes three input fields, first name, last name, and address. And once this form is submitted, excuse me, um, we do get to the post mapping, so that's a post request that the form does, and we come to this code. So and I'm just going to simply quickly explain uh, what this does. The get mapping here um, creates an instance of a car pickup info. This is a simple object that lives in our IFTT model. This is a reusable model that both the KJAR and the service and maybe other modules that you might have uh, can use. And this defines our information that our business process needs in order to call the IFTTT service. So this is basically that. And using, again, TimeLeaf as his previous videos, we can create an instance of this model uh, push it in the, the again, the, the, the spring allows us to add this to our, our model for our page, and then we use Timeleaf to to get the information out on our HTML page. Um, so far, so good. So let's take a look at source um, resource templates, and there is our demo HTML that this maps to, and this is basically a simple form that takes in um, the user information that we talked about, and here is again the submit button uh, that does the post request. So that's pretty much it for that. One, going back to the controller, once uh, the form is submitted, we want to start our business process. 
Now, for this, we need to know two things. We need to know the process ID um, that of the process that we want to start. So this is com myspace sample iftt kjar iftt demo. That's the ID defined in the BPMM2 of our business process that created. Yours might be different, so you have a different one. Uh, we define a trigger name, so which is order pickup, which we saw on, on, on the IFTT platform website. That is the trigger for our applet that we want to invoke. And then we have a container alias. Uh, this is the container of our KJAR, and you can see that what it is here. Uh, this is a sample IFTT service XML. This is generated when you generate your business application. And instead of having to call it by the ID, you might have uh, different one containers and more than one container you can just call it by its alias so this makes it a lot simpler um, to figure out uh, what container our business processes reside in. Um, let's take a look at um, then the post mapping um, we add to our model uh, again the information that the user entered in our process ID and the container ID um, in addition, what we add to the model is our the data that we need for our business process when it starts. So we will pass this information to our business process uh, when it starts, so we can pass this information to the IFTT work item handler. These things are again first name, last name, address, and our trigger name. And we put that in our model as process inputs. And that's really it. Now, where is really our business process started? And if you looked at the previous video about um, the, the timely Kia server um, dialect, uh, you will you know, notice that we have a lot of uh, one-liners or, or uh, um, how do you say, dialect um, triggers that, that do different things. And one of the things is the Kia server start process. And so what this page will do is, when it comes to this page, it will start parsing it. It will come to this line 19 to QC or start process, and it will actually start the business process for you. Now, passing the business process, um, uh, so what business process to execute is, is defined to the process ID, and this goes back to the, excuse me, model attribute uh, process ID. Here, uh, same thing for container ID and the process inputs map to the process inputs that we have defined in this map right here. So that will be passed to the directive key um, server start process and it will start our business process for us. Um, and then also we will see that we will display information here, pickup request has been sent and just confirming the uh, inputs, so the first name, last name and the address uh, that our customer, user, whoever uh, placed into the form. And that's really pretty much it. So let's now take a look at once we start it. So let's go here. Uh, where am I? So we're going to go to sample FTT service and we're going to launch .sh clean install. Again, the launch script uh, exists both um, out of the box for Unix and Windows, and what they do is they will build our first our uh, model, reusable model, our KJAR, and then our service module or business application, and uh, start our service application, which is a Spring Boot application. All right, this is almost done here. <coughs> And then we can, I will get my phone here and we'll see if this actually works. All right, so our business application has just started. So I'm going to go to, let's say, localhost 8090, which is the default port when you generate a business app and slash demo. And here is our demo.html, which we saw here. This is our form and that the we've created in our business application. So let's say my, na my name is uh, John uh, Doe. I don't know how to spell this really. Now, as far as address, uh, Google Maps takes in a physical address, but you can also tell Google Maps a lot more. And I'm going to say, instead of um, 
that I'm going to just name uh, a school that's here by. So I don't really know the address, but I know I'm at this particular school, um, and that should be enough for uh, Google Maps to actually give me the directions. So let's take a look, and uh, this is my phone. I hope you can see it. If not, I'll make it better. When I press Submit, um, what will happen is, again, our business process is going to start. It's going to come to the FTTT work item. The FTTT work item is going to uh, make a call with a trigger name that matches our receive uh, pickup request applet. This applet is going to do what we defined there, which is send us an SMS um, and also um, launch Google Maps. So let's see if this will actually work. Uh, so here's my phone. Uh, I will press submit. All right, so here we have started process instance one, and this is our post mapping for our um, demo application. And here we have launching of Google Maps, um, and here is our SMS. So as you can see that, um, all right, so it says, hello, John Doe has sent you a pickup request to there, and Google Maps has calculated our directions to the Otwell Middle School in this case. Um, so yeah, so this is pretty much it. Um, I hope you um, like this and really you can get your own ideas of what to do here. Uh, there is numerous examples and check out IFTTT and see all the triggers uh, to different services and devices that they have. Um, and of course, you know, now you can start integrating with your business processes, your business rules, and the whole JPM business application deal. So thanks again, and uh, you know, happy coding. Bye.